Today we set up Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi. So a lot of you are thinking right now, why are we installing Octoprint? Haven't we done that like five times? Well, I've never actually done a video where we just installed Octoprint. It's always been an Octoprint instance to support another project I was doing. And I've got another project coming up that requires an Octoprint install, and I'd like to have a video to be able to reference to. So I thought now would be a great time to run quickly through all the steps that it takes to get Octoprint set up on a Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to be using the OctoPi image, a Raspberry Pi 3B+, a number 10 SD card that's 16 gig, and a Raspberry Pi power supply. And as with any Raspberry Pi project, power is important. You're going to need something that can do 5 volts at around 2.5 amps to be successful. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to this install and get everything set up. The first thing we're going to do is go out and grab the OctoPi image. Octoprint.org, go to download, and this is the OctoPi image. This really is the easiest way to install OctoPrint. It gives you an image that we can apply directly to the SD card, and you don't have to compile OctoPrint by itself. So we'll go ahead and download. While that's downloading, we also need some way to create the image on the SD card. I recommend using Win32 Disk Imager. So we'll just do a search, and we'll download it. So we'll head to Downloads, we'll find our OctoPi image, let's right click, Extract All. So there's our image, now we need to install our disk imager. We'll click on the download, we'll accept, next, 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 install. And we'll click Finish. Now we can plug in our SD card to our computer. If you've used this SD card for Octoprint or Linux before, you might want to go in and reconfigure the partitions. And there's an easy way to do that. Let's go to the Windows key. We'll search for disk, and we want to create and format hard disk partitions. Be very careful in here. You don't want to format or change anything on your OS hard drive. You just want to do that SD card. So the SD card we're using is letter G. Here's the SD card right here, and I'm just going to remove these partitions. So right click, delete volume, and then same with the boot. Right click, delete volume. And now we have a raw unallocated SD card we can use. Now let's open up Win32 Disk Imager. It's already selected the SD card for us. Make sure that's correct. Let's go find our Octoprint image that we extracted. Downloads, Octopi Sketch, and there's our image file. Hit Open, and then click Write. Make sure that you're okay with overwriting this SD card, and click Yes. The write was successful. It took around three minutes to build. We'll click OK, and we can exit. We can close this window. And we'll open Explorer and open that SD card. And we need to configure our network settings. And we're going to do that in octopi-wpa-supplicant. I prefer to open these with Notepad++, but you can probably use just about anything. So here we are in Notepad++. We need to edit some of the network settings. I'm going to let this join my wireless network. I have WPA2 security, so I'm going to uncomment this line, this line, and these two. Then you want to put in your wireless network name here. Be careful, it is case sensitive. Then you want to enter your wireless password right here. And there's one other thing that's good practice to edit, and that's to set your country settings down here at the bottom. By default, it's the United Kingdom. I'm going to comment that out since I'm here in the US, and I'm going to uncomment US. Now we can save this and close it, and now we can remove the SD card from the computer and plug it into our Raspberry Pi. Now that the SD card is in and the Pi is booted up, we should be able to just open a browser and head to http colon forward slash forward slash octopi dot local. Now if you have more than one Raspberry Pi on your network, I do have a video that shows you how to get around this so you can access them with their DNS names, but if you only have the one, octopi dot local should work just fine. Now sometimes I've had Windows allow me to get to octopi dot local without installing anything else, but most of the time, you have to install Bonjour. Bonjour is a set of print services that allows you to talk to Linux and iOS devices. That's the easiest way to get around this if you can't access it directly. So let's just open up a tab. We'll search for Bonjour, Bonjour for Windows, and we'll download it here. We'll click on the download, next, accept the license, next, next. We don't need a desktop icon, install, and finished. Now we'll go back to our octopi.local tab. We'll hit refresh. And here's our new Octoprint instance. So the first time you run through, we're going to have a setup wizard. So let's go ahead and hit next. 
We definitely want to enable access control, so enter a username and password you'd like to use. Keep access control enabled. Hit next. Online connectivity check. This is what's going to check if you're online or not. If you're not online and it can't ping a host, it won't waste processing power trying to check it repeatedly. So go ahead and enable it. Hit next. Plugin blacklist. Go ahead and enable this as well. This is what's going to protect you from plugins that might not be so desirable. Hit next. Here's the Cura engine for slicing. I don't have any profiles to import for Cura, so I'm just going to hit next. We can go ahead and set up our default printer profile. We'll just call this a Prusa. You can name these whatever you want. Set up your print bed and volume. It's rectangle. It is in the lower left. The width is 250. Depth is 210. Height, 210. Axes. These are for travel moves when you're controlling your printer with OctoPrint. The only thing I recommend changing is the one for the extruder. Make that 100. If you're using OctoPrint to calibrate your extruder, you don't want it to turn too fast. That'll cause some inaccuracies. So 100 usually works for most printers. We'll go to hot end extruder. It's a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. We only have one. Hit next. And we can hit finished. We're done. So now you can go ahead and plug in your printer via USB and turn it on and a webcam if you'd like. And then if you hit refresh, you should see your new serial port for your printer. Usually you can just leave baud rate auto and hit connect. And after a couple of minutes, you should be able to see your webcam feed if you go to the control tab. There's the printer over there. Personal preference, I only like the show G code files that are stored locally. By default, it shows everything on the SD card as well. So you can go to settings here. Only show files stored locally. We haven't uploaded anything to it yet. I also like to sort the files descending by upload date. So from the main screen, you can control your temperatures of your hot end and your bed. Again, we have control for the webcam feed and we can move the printer around. You have the G-code viewer that will show you the G-code layer by layer if you'd like to see what you're getting ready to print. You have the terminal where you can interact with your printer with G-code commands manually or see the status. And the time-lapse configuration where you can configure time-lapse to take snapshots while you're printing. And you'll notice the update available over here. Now the Octopi images are a little back-leveled most of the time. So there's probably going to be a newer version of OctoPrint available for you. So it's okay to go ahead and update. We'll update now. The upgrade was successful. Now it's going to restart OctoPrint. And once it's restarted, we can go ahead and hit reload now. Any new feature that was introduced in this version of OctoPrint, it will usually rerun that setup wizard. This is usage tracking. You can either choose to enable it or disable it and send the creators of OctoPrint your information. I'm going to disable for now. And we'll hit finish. If you scroll to the bottom, you can see the version of OctoPrint you're on right here. A few other quick things about OctoPrint. Let's jump into settings. I like to change the appearance of OctoPrint. So let's title it. Let's just call it Prusa. And we'll make it orange. I'm also going to come in here to the API key. And I'm going to copy it. I'll show you that here in just a second. And if you want to add plugins to OctoPrint, you can go into the plugin manager. There's a couple that I think are pretty handy to have. So we're going to hit get more. I like it to display my Z height. We'll install display Z. And with that installed, it'll display the current height that you're at while you're printing right here. And let's go back in to Plugin Manager. And I also like the full screen webcam plugin. Full screen webcam install. And the full screen webcam plugin allows you to go to the control tab and you can double click on the webcam feed and it'll make a full screen. And you can just hit back to go back to OctoPrint. Those are just two of the plugins that I think are really handy. There's a ton of them out there. Go check them out. And one last feature that I want to mention, and that's why we copied that API key, if your slicer permits it, you can directly send G-code files to OctoPrint. So if you're using Slick3R, you can just come into Printer Settings, put in octopi.local, paste in your API key, we'll hit Test. It's working successfully, we'll hit OK. Let's grab a file to slice, and when you're happy with the settings, you can just hit Send to Printer. You can choose to rename the G-code before you send it, or start the print after the upload's complete. We'll just go ahead and hit OK. Back to OctoPrint. As soon as the upload's done, you'll see it down here in your files list, and you can load it and print it whenever you like. Of course, you can also just drag any G-code file you want into the OctoPrint instance. If you put it on the left side, it'll go to the local, that's on OctoPrint, or on the right, it'll go to the printer's SD card. Most of the time, you're just gonna want local. And it successfully uploaded. One last thing before we're done with this tutorial, let's go to settings and we're going to go to one of the new features, backup and restore. This can be really handy, especially if you're having SD card problems. 
Backup and Restore. You can create a backup of what your OctoPrint instance looks like right now. So we'll just create that backup and then you can download it to your desktop. So now we have a backup of exactly how OctoPrint is now and you can just reload OctoPrint on your SD card, come back in here, hit Browse, find your backup, hit Open. And then we can upload and restore. The restore is complete. It's going to restart OctoPrint and then it goes right back to how it was before the crash, plugins and all. And that's all there is to it. Everything should be set up and working correctly. And now I have a great reference that I can go back to in case I ever need to install OctoPrint again. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.